Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten here bringing you part 5 in our blind playthrough for Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem. Nancy has just decided that she would like to be unsafe and go visit the haunted Hathorn house in the middle of the night. Classic Nancy style. So we are going to take Deirdre's car and go to the Hathorn house in the middle of the night. Okay, so we need to go, I think, through the cemetery to get to the the right place. Can I'm surprised I can't look at this statue. Oh well, okay. Let's try and navigate our way over to the cemetery. No guarantees about it being very easy to get there. <laughs> The ambient noises are nice, like the owls and the wind blowing and the screechy birds. I appreciate stuff like that. Okay, let's go to the Hawthorne house. We walking through the woods in the middle of the night. Thunder and rain. Oh, what was that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Massachusetts. Joe, how the heck did you guys know? We read about the Hathorn house in the Globe. Suspected arson. Your name was mentioned. Not as a suspect, obviously. <laughs> Tegan Perry mentioned she had hired you to investigate. Hired? Huh. That's news to me. I came here as a favor for Deirdre. Deirdre Shannon? Wow, that's surprising. Yeah, it's a strange case all around. So, what can I help you guys with? Well, we're working this case and a few legal questions have arisen. My father would probably be more helpful than me, guys. Yeah, well, we'd prefer to call you because of, you know, history. <sighs> what my brother is trying to say is that there are some similarities to an old case we worked on. Sure. If you want to send me your notes, I can look them over for you. Great. That's great. Salem's pretty close to Boston. If you guys have the time, you should come up here and check it out while I'm in town. Really? Yeah. It would be good to catch up. Eh, I don't know, Nancy. With our special detective powers, we might be mistaken for witches. Heard they don't fare well up there. Are you kidding me? They love you guys. Did you know that Salem is the only police force that has a witch as an official emblem? Hmm, I don't think that's true. I'll bet you on it. Okay, you're on. I'll take payment when we arrive in Salem. Maybe in a week or so. A week? Hopefully I won't be here then. But if you can make it up earlier, great. Good talking to you, Dan. Yeah, same to you two. Bye. Um, okay, so the Hardy Boys might come. Why is there a ghost? Creepy. Why? What are you doing here? 
perpetuating stereotypes about the area. I think, was it over here that we saw, like, the creepy ghost thing? There was definitely a creepy ghost thing. Am I supposed to keep going this way to get to the Hathorn house? Oop. Don't look behind you. That's super creepy! Question mark. The ghost will steal your soul. Not funny, Deirdre. Oh. <laughs> May isn't talking. Did you say something to her? Nothing in particular. This forest is giving me the chills. Doi. I can't believe you're actually going out there. And if you see a ghost... Don't let it take your soul. <laughs> okay, dear Tra. <laughs> I'll try. Well, now I'm like super paranoid to look behind me. Search Hathorn House for clues. Still gotta do that. Ghost! Just the same one. Is it even, like, productive to turn to the side? I feel like it's not. Ooh, creepy. Ooh. Ooh, there's a light on in the haunted house. Oh, and a shadow. And smoke coming out of it. Don't go in, Nancy! Nancy, this is a bad decision. Make good choices. What oh. are you doing here? Oh, jeez. Are you Lauren Holt? You're trespassing. This is private property. I'm giving you one chance to explain yourself. I need to speak with Lauren Holt. So? What? Well, I wanted to talk to her about Francis Tuttle. Why? Did you know her or something? No, but I want to. She was a great woman. I believe it. She was the former owner of this place, right? Yeah. You can come in. To the haunted house. Hi. My name is Nancy Drew. Lauren Holt. But you knew that. T? Please. You've lived here a while? Since I was 11. Ever since Francis... Sorry. Still hurts. She was very special to me. So... You're here because why again? I'm investigating the fire. For whom, exactly? A cousin of the Perrys. It seems like everyone thinks she did it, but there's no evidence. The Perrys are complicated. Do you think May did it? Maybe. I don't know. Used to feel sorry for her, but I don't know what she's capable of now. Or Tegan. Or both of them. The Perrys look out for themselves, and no one else. Always have. Sorry. I've just been under a lot of stress lately. I don't mean to sound like that. Anyway, what do you want to know?
What can you tell me about the history of the Hathorn House? Built by Judge John Hathorn in 1695, the man flat out stole the land from the people he sentenced to death. Property has changed hands many times over the years, with Francis Tuttle being the most recent owner. Have you looked for the well? Of course, but I can't find it. Believe me, I've tried to find it. And now the judge has given me days to deliver or the town will take control. I don't have a copy, but I know one exists. Francis told me all the time that the Hathorn House and its grounds would be mine if something ever happened to her. She knew that I would take care of this place better than anyone else. What happens to you? I won't be here anymore. But I have representation, a professional lawyer. Her name's Alicia Cole. She's helping me out. Is Luminous Infusions your shop? Yes. What do you do there? Just curious. It's a tea room and modern apothecary. You know, before there was a pharmacist, the town relied on an herbalist to provide medicines for headaches and sickness and energy and stuff like that. Interesting. Did Francis Tuttle teach you this? No, I taught myself. Oh, cool. So, I saw the ghost out in the cemetery. The scarecrow? Yeah, I've heard there were ghosts out here, but all I saw was that. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> I've seen a lot of weird things. What are you so doing? So far, I've yet to find one without a rational explanation. Then there's nothing to talk about. But why does everyone think there are ghosts out here? A town this old is bound to have some unbelievable stories. So you've seen one. You don't live here. You wouldn't understand. So you have. What were you doing two nights ago? Two nights ago? Why? The house was burned a week ago. Different case. Might be related. I was in my shop like I was every night. Anyone see you? Tourists. No one who is still in town, but I have sales receipts to prove it. You come by Luminous Infusions and I'll show you. I really do appreciate you talking to me. It's hard. I, I want... Look. I don't really know who set fire to the house, but I know that I want to stay here. It means something to me. It's the only home I've ever had. I'm getting a little tired. I think we've talked enough, don't you? Of course. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. A ghost. Whoever is doing this, you're not frightening me away. Look at it, Nancy. Otherwise, it's gonna come close to you. Not possible. That's not possible. It's gonna pop up in front of her. Curse not the darkness. Roll? 
Oh, hello. Okay. She's right above you. It's not real. It's not real. Ah! Why is it so delayed? Ooh. What's going on? You weren't answering your phone. What's wrong? I saw it. Her. I guess it could have been him too. It was too confusing to really make out. What are you talking about? The ghost, Deirdre. The ghost at Hathorn House. The one you were talking about. I saw it. Wow. Never thought you'd try to pull a joke like this. I've underestimated you. This is a really good performance. Very un Nancy Drew like. It's not a joke. Deirdre, I saw her. Didn't you want me to see it? Didn't you want me to look into it? Well, yeah, but I didn't think for a second that you would. I guess. I thought you'd go up there and find... Smoke and mirrors or whatever it is you do. You're saying... It's real? I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not used to being so freaked out. Wait, you didn't leave my car out there, did you? What? No, no. I've calmed down enough to drive back. Sit outside. Good. I could get you more chowder. Don't think it'll help. I need answers. Okay, so let's go through it. I do find working a mystery strangely calming. Okay. I don't know how to explain it, but I saw something. I don't know what to tell you, Drew. It's as weird as Moonchunk cheese ice cream and sandals with socks. But my instinct is... <laughs> that the two are related. The fire and the ghosts. Right. You're not buying Olivia's story that some coven of witches came here to unleash ghosts to take revenge by burning it down, though. Right? Right, I think. It's unlikely anyway. You really think what you saw was real? It's worse than that. I think in order to know, I need to see it again. And you need to come with me. Tomorrow. Okay, and then we can plan road trips to find Bigfoot and aliens and the Loch Ness Monster. Hey, sounds fun to me. I found out something interesting. Did you know that Francis Tuttle had a will? Judge Danforth never mentioned that. Because they can't find it, they assume it doesn't exist. So, if it does exist, Lauren would get the estate. Oh, and that lawyer, Alicia Cole, represents her. How's that working out for her? There doesn't seem to be much progress made. Yeah, well, without a will, what could she really do? It's been a long day. I think I'm just gonna call it a night. You do look kinda... Well, maybe don't video chat with the boyfriend. At least not until you get the twigs out of your hair. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. Hey. What? You want that chowder now? The offer expired. I was going to say... We make a pretty good team. See? That's proof right there. You are definitely hallucinating.
Okay. <sighs> There's always an explanation. Gotta remember that. What is the town of Greenwich, New York? Sorry? They have a witch on their emblem. We won! Really? Sending you a pic. When can we expect payment? <laughs> That's a fire department logo. I said police. Public safety. It's all the same. A technicality. <sighs> There's something I have to get off my chest. I saw a ghost. <laughs> Sorry, what? This case. I've never seen anything like it. It felt real. I can't explain it. What is it? What's wrong? Uh, hold on. Say no more. It just so happens that ghost hunting is our specialty. Wait, what? We're not passing on a chance like this. Be there before you know it. <laughs> Only if you really want to. Talk to you later. Dreaming about blood, Nancy? Whoa! Ooh! <laughs> yeah? Good morning, sunshine. That what face. Time is it? It's early. Hurry up, get dressed, and meet me downstairs. I have something to cheer you up. I feel like I'm in an interactive movie. Help with breakfast. Do I get to cook? I love cooking puzzles and challenges. Oops, if I can get down to the kitchen. Oh, it's the Hardys! Oh my, oh my, oh my, not good, not good, not good! <laughs> oh, what are you guys doing in here? They're trying their best to unimpress me. Mission accomplished. Nancy! Hi! Joe was just, uh, making an effort. Oh, that's what that smell is. I tried showing him the ropes, but he wants to prove he can do it without my help. Tegan set out the ingredients for Johnny Cakes before she had to run, but I gotta admit, it's been a while since I last whipped something up. Successfully. Oh, I love Johnny Cakes. I can help. Of course you can. All right, Hardy, step down before we have another fire on our hands. Okay, um... Dry ingredients. Step one. One cup of sugar. One cup of sugar. Two tablespoons of sugar. This can't be right. I told you I couldn't keep up with her. So I improvised. I'm 100% certain about the amounts, though. Let's approach this sensibly. What do we need? <laughs> okay, flour, sugar, salt, and baking powder. What do we need of each thing? One cup of flour, sugar, salt. One cup of flour, sugar, two tablespoons of, one tablespoon, one teaspoon. Okay, I'm gonna say we probably need one cup of flour. Check the flour. Flour. Salt, sugar, flour, cornmeal. Okay. One cup of? One cup of flour. flour. I think you've got it. Okay. 
two tablespoons of sugar, probably. Tablespoon, select tablespoon, select tablespoon, select teaspoon. Okay, two tablespoons. One spoon of sugar. Sugar. And then one spoon of, and then I add. think you've got it. One spoon of sugar. Looks right to me. Okay. And then probably a tablespoon of cornmeal and a teaspoon of baking powder. Wait. Baking powder, cornmeal, flour, sugar, salt. Oh, we don't need cornmeal. Can we restart? Restart, restart. All right, let's see. Step one. Wait, I didn't need one to restart. <laughs> one cup of sugar, two tablespoons of sugar. This can't be right. I told you I couldn't keep up with her, so I improvised. I'm 100% certain about the amounts, though. Okay, one Let's cup of flour. So... One cup of flour. Looks right to me. And two tablespoons of sugar. One spoon of... Sugar. We're getting there. One spoon of sugar. Looks right to me. Okay, so two tablespoons of sugar and then probably a tablespoon of salt. One spoon of salt. That's what I tried, too. Oh. Uh-oh. That means it's probably wrong. Okay. So a little bit of salt and then more baking powder. Okay. All right, let's see. Step one. One cup... I told you I couldn't keep up with her. Let's... Okay, so I can click through, which is at least nice. Oh, we could just do this. Ugh, why haven't I been doing that? One cup of flour. We're getting there. One spoon of sugar. We're getting there. One spoon of sugar. We're getting there. One teaspoon of salt. I think you've got it. One spoon of baking powder. Looks right to me. Okay. So those are all of our dry ingredients. Recipe Johnny Cakes. One cup of, and then maybe a cup of One cornmeal. Cup of cornmeal. Looks right to me. That looks great. Let's tackle the next step. Okay. All right. Second step. We have to fill the bowl until the weight is just right. Quick heads up. This is about where things started to go south last time. Hey. Let's just trust that Nancy knows what she's doing. We'll see about that. Milk, 8 ounces. Melted butter, 0.5 ounces. Egg, questionable ounces. Vanilla, 0.2 ounces. It needs to add up to 11.7. So if we start with 8 ounces of milk. 8 ounces of milk. 0.5 ounces of melted butter. So that's it, 8.5. Point 0.2 ounces of vanilla, which would put us at 8.7. Um, so that's 8.7. And then we need egg to get us up to, which hopefully weighs like three ounces. One egg. Two eggs. Okay, that equals the same amount. Don't forget a dash of nutmeg. Nutmeg can't weigh anything. A dash of nutmeg. Milk, eight ounces, melted butter, egg, vanilla, and a dash of nutmeg. That looks great. Let's tackle the next step. Finally, my favorite part. I thought your favorite part was eating. 
my next favorite part. Dear goodness. Joe, could you help me pour while I flip? Sure thing. Frying Johnny cakes in the pan. Timing is important. Don't flip the batter raw. Be ready to flip when steaming hot. So every time they steam, you flip. Here comes some more. Skills. Mad cooking skills right here. Look at me go. Here comes some more. I don't think we need more, Joe. All done. They look... So Johnny cakes are just pancakes? I want to eat them. Kitty cakes. Franken cakes. Ghost pancakes. Pirate pancakes. Pumpkin cakes. Werewolf pancakes. And witch pancakes. It tells you the ratio of milk and butter, and then you can, like, add different fruits and eggs. Let's see. That's cool. Um, cat, because I'm a cat I'll person. I'll do this one. Time for some cooking. Am I making them into the shape of a cat? Now I'm confused. What am I doing? Almost done. I need to make more like these sometime. Deirdre acts tough sometimes. But who doesn't get happy from eating homemade pancakes? Found cat pancake. And I can, like, share it with someone? Here, dear, do I have a cat pancake? Can't use that here. <laughs> I can't use it anywhere. Um, who do I talk to? Do I talk to all of you? Ooh, these smell delicious. Great job, Nancy. These look amazing. Okay. May, these are the Hardy brothers, Frank and Joe. We are very interested in your case. Uh-huh. They're good friends of mine. They're going to help us with the investigation. The more people we have working on this, the better chance we have of solving the case. Cool. Joe, you need to learn how to cook. Maybe let Frank teach you. Otherwise, how are you going to impress anyone? Solving crimes impresses people. Be kind of rude, Nancy. So does committing them. What? It's true. Not saying I'm impressed by that. Just stating a fact. I prefer someone who possesses a deep intellectual appreciation. And table manners. You want to be impressed? We should finally show her our business plan for our new business. What? It's very businessy. What? What is it? Well, Joe and I have been talking recently about making things a bit more official. Since we're always called to solve crimes, we thought that maybe we should start getting paid for it. Novel idea. We're starting our very own detective agency. License, insurance, the whole thing. And... And we want to know if you'd be interested in being a partner. A partner?
partner. Hey, table that. All right, Drew. Why not update everyone on where we're at? So, I guess you're wondering about the thing I mentioned. Yes, sounds super exciting. I already told them about the whole sighting. Yeah, I can't explain it yet. Even with the most modern scientific techniques available, there are many phenomena that we still cannot explain. I believe what you saw was real. What? What? Sure, some sort of combination of gaseous blow-off and light refraction. No, supernatural. A ghost, a real ghost, with thoughts and memory and agency. I'm not so sure. I just built some new equipment that I'd love to try out. I'm sure it's nothing, but we'll go to the cemetery today and investigate anyway. Maybe we can add ghost hunting to our detective services. <laughs> Kidding. One thing I'd like to do today is check the town archives. If it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to handle this. You were gonna look into the history of ownership of the Hathorn House, right? Yeah, sure. We can go together. Uh, no. It's better if I handle this solo. I'm a whiz with microfish. Don't ask me why. Sounds like a story. And I'm not going to tell it to you, okay? So, Nancy, what do you think we should focus on for the investigation? arson that happened last week and we haven't had the chance to collect any alibis yet we need to ask everyone we've met where they were on the night of the arson corroborating their answers with whomever they were with will help bring into focus who is and isn't a suspect Judge Danforth mentioned that he was the victim of a burglary. What was stolen? We don't know. The judge was working with Tegan on developing a case for the Accused Witches Organization. The what? The descendants of the Accused Witches of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. They're staking a claim to the Hathorn Estate due to unjust dispossession and execution of their ancestors. It's one of the reasons I search for the Book of Apologies in Austria, as it contains a record of wronged families. But someone swiped it from right under my nose. And around the time of the arson, there was a burglary at the judge's office. Too coincidental not to be connected. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'd like to review the crime scene at the courthouse for any clues. The judge might not let you do that. He didn't sound very forthcoming. True. But maybe my father can convince him. They're old friends. I can give him a call. All right, what else? We need to figure out how the theft from Mosam Castle is connected to this case. Theft of what? The Book of Apologies. My dad asked me to retrieve it from Mosam Castle in Austria as a favor for Judge Danforth, who works here in Salem. It details all the victims of the witch trials, some of which are still unknown to this day.
However, this book was stolen as well, three days ago, when Nancy was there. Why was this book all the way in Austria? Great question. The resident historian told me the judge who wrote the book willed all his belongings to be preserved by whichever museum would have them at the time. That must be how it ended up in an Austrian castle for safekeeping. Well, that certainly didn't stop the thief, whoever it is. I can ask around about alibis during this time period as well. See if anyone in town can't be accounted for. Might point us in the right direction. I have something to add. Whoever is responsible for this crime is going to great lengths to cover it up. We don't know if these people are dangerous. Remember that. And be careful. Good point, Frank. All right, well, I'm going to leave this part right here. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.